Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for watching this. Uh, my name is Angela Lin. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm part of FRN's Student and Alumni Advisory Board. Uh, hopefully, you're watching this video after you watched the amazing advocacy conversation that Regina, Diraj, and Renee had. Um, if you haven't seen that yet, definitely go and watch it. Uh, so Regina, I reached out and asked if I could give a short a response video sharing my thoughts and reactions to that conversation, which I was honored to agree to do so. Um, it was definitely a great, important conversation around advocacy and what young voters and college students can do to educate and advocate for policy changes. Um, I have a lot of thoughts and reflections that I want to express to kind of continue this dialogue. Um, so I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, I thought Renee did a really great job of breaking it down because advocacy can feel really overwhelming, especially wanting to advocate at the federal level, but she gave really concrete steps and actions that we can take that feel manageable yet impactful, which is always important. Um, they talked a lot about the Farm Bill and how engagement from younger voters and college students can really help move the needle during this reauthorization process that's happening right now. Um, and I really encourage you to take the steps that Renee outlined, one of the most important things you can do right now is engage with your elected officials at the federal level and make sure your voice is heard. Um, but I also want to emphasize that Congress and the federal level is just one piece of a very large puzzle when it comes to advocacy. Uh, Renee gave us a little sneak peek into the state level work that WWF is starting to get into. Um, and I want to really emphasize the importance of state legislatures and city councils and getting involved at the state and local level as well. Um, in a lot of ways that can feel more accessible than thinking about Congress, you know, that can seem really big and distant and overwhelming. Um, and state and local policies arguably have a bigger impact into your day-to-day -day life. Um, so if you have the capacity, I really encourage you to pay attention to what's happening um, in your state. Like Regina said about the federal level, you know, find uh, just one committee in your state legislature that you're interested in following and learning more about. Um, these are small steps that you can take uh, just 10 minutes out of your day to do and engage with to become a more informed citizen. Um, the second thing I wanted to reflect on was Renee's point about the power of younger students and children, not just college students, who are pushing for change uh, that they want to see around food waste. Um, and this just made me reflect on the different forms of um, that advocacy can take place. You know, in addition to talking to your legislators and members of Congress, you could be talking to the younger generation and educating them on these issues and getting them involved from an early age. Um, so if you're a student on a college campus, you know, you can engage with children. That is also a form of advocacy that is extremely accessible. Um, you can partner with a school or a different student organization that is already working with children or after school programs, you know, talk to them about food waste and hunger. You know, that's a concept that even they can understand. Um, you can talk to high schoolers about the food recovery work that you're doing, and that can be a source of inspiration and advocacy in its own way. Um, you know, young power have young people have so much power. Um, and when we organize and educate each other and advocate for one another, we can push for real change, which is so important because, um, you know, as young people, we are the future and we have the power to shape the future that we wanna see. Um, and related to that, relational organizing is also key to advocacy. Um, you know, after you write to your member of Congress, uh, talk to people within your own networks, you know, close family and friends, you know, post it on social media. That's a form of organizing and getting people to join you in a cause that's important to you and building that people power that really gives you the ability to move the needle on policy. Um, Renee talked about including a personal story to make your story stick out when you write to your members of Congress. Um, you know, talk about what's at stake for you with uh, with a bill, why this issue is so important to you and what your personal connection is to it. Um, and that will appeal not only to your representatives, but also to your own family and friends and coworkers and neighbors. Um, I am a big believer in the power of personal storytelling to move people. And that can be a really powerful 
tool for advocacy and organizing that you can use um, and is always at your disposal if you feel comfortable with it. Um, your story and personal stake in these issues, uh, whether it's food security or food waste or some other policy, you know, your stories have the power to change the world when you share them. Um, so I really encourage you all to tap into that power um, because it's truly powerful and to use that to bring other people into the issues that matter to you. Um, I also heard Diraj mention uh, the person he met at the White House Conference on Hunger, Nutrition, and Health, who started a food pantry at his labor union. And I just wanted to take a moment to really dig into that and uplift that and how wonderful that is. Um, you know, you don't have to work in the advocacy or policy field to be an advocate, just as you don't have to be a public policy major or nutrition major or environmental major um, in order to do food recovery and be involved with FRN. Um, you know, you can be an advocate in your own communities wherever you are, um, both geographically, uh, but also, you know, wherever you are in terms of your stage in life, what field you're working in, the type of people you are surrounded by, your community. Um, and that reminded me of my own experiences, you know, in the summer of 2019, I interned at Herman Miller and I helped start a food recovery program at the, at the um, company and they just make office furniture. Um, so when you think about advocacy, um, legislative advocacy is definitely one big important bucket of that. Um, and Renee and Dirash talked a lot about uh, what legislative advocacy could look like. Um, but don't forget that advocacy within your own networks and communities and workplaces is just as important and impactful. Um, Renee, at the end, shared her experiences finding hope and optimism in moments when the pace of progress can feel really frustrating um, or the future looks grim. And I just want to echo her point that the work that you are doing right now, no matter how big or small, um, no matter the scale, is paving the way and opening up the door for future leaders and those involved in policy and food recovery and the broader food justice movement. Um, it can be really easy to um, be sucked into the present or focus on the past and the lack of progress there may have been, um, but we have to think about the long term, everything you're doing as part of the larger picture. And when you keep that perspective and use the longer term change as your kind of North Star, um, as you advocate and organize and vote, that can be really helpful and not being so overwhelmed by everything that is going on. Um, and the last point that I just wanted to reflect and expand on is something Renee said about how food security and reducing food waste is a nonpartisan issue. Um, and that's so true and so important to remember and that these issues affect us in our communities in our environment um, every day. You know, food justice is not a partisan issue. Um, it's a human issue. It's a community issue. It's an environmental issue. It's something that we as community members and neighbors and human beings on this planet have a duty to do, to look out for each other and our planet. Um, so we have to remember to be informed as much as you can, given your mental capacity and time and energy, um, and to engage and advocate and organize and vote for your values. Um, Regina mentioned that I helped facilitate a conversation uh, similar to the advocacy one that Renee and Diraj had um, during this past election season around voting and the importance of voting, particularly uh, the youth vote and how much power uh, we have. And I'll just say really quickly, you know, this year isn't a big midterm or presidential election year, um, but it's still important to go vote. Um, there are plenty of huge statewide races in a lot of states. And going back to my earlier point, you know, local and municipal races um, are just as important um, in influencing so many aspects of your daily life, one of which could be a policy related to food in your city or town. Um, so just a friendly reminder to make sure you are registered to vote. If you just turned 18, you can register to vote. Um, if you're on a college campus and you want to vote in the city where you go to college, you can update your registration or register to vote if it's a new state. Um, just make sure down the road later this year when it's election time that you are registered to vote and have a plan to vote because your vote truly does matter, arguably more so in um, statewide and municipal elections during a quote unquote off year um, because you know, turnout is typically lower in these elections, um, but you can make a difference by showing up and voting for your values and voting for the change that you want to see in your community. 
Um, and of course, in the lead up to the election right now, um, as Renee and Diraj and Regina talked about, you know, call or write to your representatives and senators in Congress as they reauthorize uh, the really important farm bill and maybe take some other steps as well to be informed and engaged. Um, you know, I have so much more I could say, but I'll stop right here. Um, as Regina said, this is part of an ongoing conversation and dialogue that we're having as a larger network. And we're so thankful for you tuning in and listening um, to all the expertise that has been shared as part of these conversations and taking action as a result. Um, you know, we wanna hear from you, any questions you may have or what you're interested in talking about because your voices and thoughts are really important in shaping these conversations we're having as a network. Um, so again, thank you so much for listening and caring and advocating and doing the work that you're doing, whether you're a student or alumni or an ally or community member. Um, you know, it takes all of us to do this work and to make change happen. And remember that we have the power to create the world we want to see. And that's a world where no one is hungry and no food is wasted. Um, so thank you again so much for listening. <laughs>